creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn ways to economize in the kitchen and we'll show how to make hand sculpted dolls. One of my guests is Michelle Dudash and she's a registered dietitian and spokesperson for the California Raisin Marketing Board. Michelle's going to explain how to economize your kitchen by choosing foods that will add flavor and nutrition without breaking the bank. And while we may not be able to do much about the price of food, she's going to show how we can make a few simple adjustments to our grocery list to help extend our food dollars. She's from Sacramento, California. And we'll begin the show today with Therese Cato, and she's an author and doll maker who's been making soft sculpted dolls for years. Therese will show how to sculpt the doll's face before it's attached to the body. And you'll enjoy seeing many of the dolls that are featured in her book, which is titled Make Cloth Dolls, A Foolproof Way to Sew Fabric Friends. Therese, thank you so much for coming and, and bringing all of your traveling companions with you. I really enjoyed reading your book, but I guess my first question was, how did you get involved in sculpting these dolls? I started sewing when I was 11. Uh -huh. An aunt taught me. and. I loved dolls as a child, so I wanted to make them, and I just started making them as a child, and it evolved. Creating your own patterns and designs and styles? I did, because I didn't have any patterns, oh. and I looked at the dolls I had and said, hmm, how did, how did they That's make these? Amazing. And just started from there. Well, I think the thing that I found so fascinating was how you work from the back to sculpt, which is what you're going to show us in a minute. Right. But let's take a look at these little fellows and girls up here and maybe point out a couple of things that are unique or different about each one. Okay, well, just as people all have different features and uh -huh. different noses, you can take a simple sculpted face and a pattern and change the shape of the nose slightly and you've got a new face. Mm -hmm. um, and by taking different sculpting stitches and pulling them in different directions, you've got a, a different smile or a frown. <laughs> right, a different expression. So uh -huh. um, you just need to play around with it mm -hmm. and experiment. And yeah. you can tell in the chef and then the, the fellow next to him, their noses are totally different, and exactly. which gives their facial expression such a individual characteristic. Right, and something really kind of neat is fabric has stretch in it. And if you cut your pattern so your stretch goes this way, uh -huh. You get a long face, face. Uh -huh. and if you put the stretch this way, you can oh. make big chubby cheeks. <laughs> so just <laughs> by that. changing the orientation of the pattern, uh -huh. you can work and with the fabric. that as well. Mm -hmm. And now we have two little gals here. They they even have blush on their cheeks and um, different um, notions, buttons, and and then you've painted on some of those. And what's neat is you're, I, I like people, I said I can follow or copy anything. Right. I'm not original. So in, in the book there's patterns for the dolls and suggestions on way to individualize them. Exactly. Well, so do you start with the head or do you start with the body? I start with the body and I tell my students when I'm teaching, once you've made a beautiful body, you don't have to worry about ruining it with the head. A lot of people oh. are very scared about, I can't do that. Uh -huh. And so I always say, the head takes a little bit of fabric. If you don't like it, make another one. Make another head or save mm -hmm. that one for another body. Right. Uh -huh. Plus, it's easier to dress a doll when she has no head. Oh, hadn't thought about so that. You so don't you don't have to even make all these little doll clothes. Now, that's the fun. I would like that part of it. It is fun. Okay. Well, let's just start with the first head uh, or part of a head and see what happens. I just use polyfill. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, polyester. That quilt are right. familiar with it. Um, if it feels like cotton balls, you don't want to use it because it looks bumpy Too under clumpy. the fabric. Uh -huh. And you stuff the head. Now, what very is this outside firmly. fabric? What is that? This is actually Kona cotton. Kona cotton. And I teach my students to start with Kona cotton because it's so easy to work with. And then once they master it, you can move on to the real stretchy stuff mm -hmm. because that seems to be frustrating and, yeah. and hard. But once you Kona cotton, okay. Once you've learned, now when you stuff it you can really shape the head. It mm -hmm. needs to be nice and firm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have big cheeks, push the stuffing in there and get it nice mm -hmm. and tight. Okay. So now we have the finished head and we're going to make a nose and if you, on the pattern, we're gonna go down the bridge of the nose, we're gonna mark the nostrils, and we're gonna mark our smile. Hmm. So what I do is I start by sticking pins yes. in and then I decide if I'm 
happy with it. These were the eyes we saw this, a while ago. Well, this is right Are here. The, oh, like the, the tear duct tear area duct, okay. between my eyes. Uh -huh. And I'm going to go down to the top of the nose wing. And so I move those pins around until I'm happy with them. Oh, okay. Because then you have no problem moving them. And then I take, I love these pens. I do too. This is air. Air dry. Air dry. Or dissolve. It just uh -huh. disappears within 24, 48 hours. And this is water soluble. And so you can use either end. Um, I like the blue. It lasts a little it longer. It lasts a little <laughs> longer. And then when you paint the face, it will disappear. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to mark. I'm going to take the pins out and I'm going to make the marks. Mm -hmm. And the and the cool thing is if you wiggle the pin, it makes a hole in the fabric. So you can tell where to mark. And you can see exactly where to make that dot. And okay. so that makes it a little bit. Okay, now we're beginning to see how you've created the shell. I'll turn it sideways so you can see the little profile. Right. Uh -huh. Now when it comes to needles, you wow. do need a little bit of a big needle. And the reason is we're going what is to... That about a four? Or that's how, about a five-inch needle. Wow, I didn't even know they made them that long. They make them even longer. Uh -huh. um, I use seven, eight-inch needles for size. my rag dolls. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. And the reason is we're going to put all of our knots on the back of the mm -hmm. head and we're, it's going to be under the hairline oh, so yeah, you won't, won't see show. it, uh -huh. right? But I need to get from the back of the head to the farthest spot, which would be the mouth down here. So mm -hmm. you see I need that needle yeah. so that I can just poke it without getting frustrated. Getting frustrated, exactly. Okay. So you're going to thread your needle with what's comfortable for you. Because what is that, just a strong? It is a strong quilting thread. Quilting thread. Quilting thread. And you're going to make a lot of knots, so you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about long enough to go through the whole process. Oh, just stop what you're and comfortable start. with, mm -hmm. exactly. And you're you're knotting, and you're coming out to the front, and you're just sewing back and forth stitches <laughs> through the nose. <laughs> okay. And then I see the little nostrils have already been created on this <coughs> one. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. And it's just making an indentation, just to give you that hint of. A hole. A hole. A uh -huh. hole. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we will work on the, I call them the nose wing. Oh, um, excuse me. I had him upside, upside down. down. Um, getting that, that shape to have an indentation here. Uh -huh. And when you are pulling your stitches, the most important thing to remember is don't just pull the thread. Push your finger in where the stitch is uh -huh. and pull Kinda the help slack it, out. In other words, right. shape it. Because if you just pull it, you could pull a hole in the fabric. Oh, yeah. But so now we've got our nose done. And that's a simple nose. Mm -hmm. um, but and it's a quite it's a nice nose. <laughs> it's a nice nose. And now we will do the smile. Oh, the smile. And the smile is um, you can do little lips, big lips, big smile. It it's up to and you. And you paint then the lips, like on the girls, you can paint them as large as you want. So right. you're really just creating the, the, the smile separation line, the separation. between the lips is what we're doing. Uh -huh. And on this one, I think it's a little bit um, larger than this mm -hmm. one. They look funny when they're not painted. Yeah, they, so don't be discouraged. They look like they have no teeth or dentures. They do, uh -huh. but it, it evolves. So just keep going with okay. it and it'll get better. Uh -huh. And and that's it. Now. When you are, all the patterns in my book, the heads look like this. This is the back of the head and the front. Oh, is this, this the nose? This Which, is the oh, nose. Oh, this is the nose. Uh -huh. This is the forehead, the nose, and the chin. Now, you can change the shape of this nose, and it won't Just by cutting the it pattern. longer or something? Right, or? just to get longer, bigger, fatter, whatever you want to do, uh -huh. and, it, and you'll have a different face. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's different, just like people. Exactly. And you don't have to worry about now the pattern won't work because it will. Um, the way it goes together, as long as you don't change you this line. two of line. these and two of these. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And do you want to take a look at this and show us? This is Princess Nola. And she <laughs> I like her little lips. <laughs> now her little lips are puckered because she's kissing her frog. Oh, so, which is right here. So this is her head. Before it's stuffed, <laughs> and you see that she has a little separation of the lips there, uh -huh. and and I'm going to stuff that, and that's going to give me those little bumps to you work with. You mean you will actually put the polyfill within those little in those little bumps, and you wow. think it doesn't do much, but you see it does. And is that what this is for? Is that for 
poking in for stuffing. small stuffing, okay? <laughs> I always tell my students, if you have a stuffing fork, a special tool, and you like it, use it. Use it. I use... That's a dowel rod, Just a isn't dowel. It? Uh -huh. You can use a Chinese... Um, chopstick? Chopstick. Oh, yeah. And also an unsharpened pencil because the eraser end helps mm -hmm. to grab the, oh, it would. the stuffing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, this is, so this is just so cute. So this is her head sculpted. Now, her eyes aren't open, so I did sculpt around her eyes, so they're mm -hmm. indented a little bit. Hmm. And she doesn't have that straight line down her nose because by sculpting her eyes, it gave her that bridge. Do you see this bridge that we, oh, uh -huh. on these, on this we sculpted right here. down, uh -huh. but we didn't need to with her because... The act of doing the eyes gave her that uh -huh. bridge of her nose. So talking about the nose, let's go back one more time because now I see what you're talking about in the chef and the, what is this guy's name? Gregory. Gregory. <laughs> Gregory has a long pointed nose. He does. Uh, turn him a little profile. So that was simply taking that same pattern and cutting it longer. And just making those subtle little mm -hmm. changes. Exactly. And she just hardly has a little nose. Well, she's my little rag doll and mm -hmm. the only sculpting she has is on her mouth. Just to oh, give her a little smile. A little heart mouth. And uh -huh. that's it. And I think this is adorable. She even has her doll with her, her right. baby. Okay. I and love to accessorize. And so every <laughs> I baby guess so. every baby needs a baby, right? Every rag doll <laughs> right. needs a rag doll. And then she has a tiny little mouth that's kind of sunken in. Because I pulled that stitch uh, and with a lot of tension to give her that indentation mm -hmm. in her mouth. Well, I wish we could go step by step. Unfortunately, we don't have time, but thank you for showing us because I think this is the start of what creates that individualized doll that you make. It does. Thank and you, it's Therese. so much fun. Michelle, thank you for being with us today. I know you're a nutritionist, you're a chef, so you're really into this nutrition thing. And one of the things that I find hard or easy, depending on if I have set up my kitchen, my pantry, my refrigerator and have the right foods in it, then it's easy for me to eat healthy. But if I don't, then I just grab the nearest thing I can to snack on. Do you find most people are that way? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think it's all about planning ahead and uh, having those ingredients stocked in your pantry and, um, you know, also trying to get a, a, a the best deal in the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there's some things we have control over the cost, um, mm -hmm. some things we don't. So what do you suggest about how should we buy the right fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables? Yeah, the, the most important thing is to get back to the basics. And that mm -hmm. comes down to buying whole, minimally processed foods and keep Keeping the higher processed foods, keep those on the shelf because those tend to be more expensive. Oh. Okay, there's more labor, more things going into them, so they're usually more expensive. So when it comes to, first off, fruits and vegetables, for example, we want to, um, when you're choosing fresh fruits, choose seasonal fruits, the ones that are oh, in season, mm -hmm. because it's the law of supply and demand. When there's sure. a higher quantity, there's going to be more available, cheaper prices. And also, they're probably going to taste better and mm -hmm. have more nutrients. And we're supporting like our local farmer's market or local people who are selling. Definitely, yeah. So if it's local, all the better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, dried fruits are another great choice because they're, especially, well, especially those that have no sugar added. For example, California raisins, there's no sugar added. They are the most economical fruit out of all dried fruits. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was surprised because I thought if they're a dried fruit, mm -hmm. all of them are going to be the same. That's that not is true. not the case, unfortunately. One prime example is craisins. In fact, craisins, by the way, have 40% added sugar. So that, so, wow. you're, so you're actually getting, they're, twi they're almost twice as expensive as raisins and, and you're getting about wow. half as much fruit, a little less. <laughs> so, I mean, the, definitely the better bargain is raisins. You're getting the antioxidants, fiber, and a quarter cup counts as a full serving of fruit. I think that's amazing. Just a quarter of a cup. Yeah. I, I eat a whole box full of them well, at a time. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So you yeah. can keep those in your pantry uh -huh. in little containers and then they're ready to go. And they're also good to put in kids' lunch boxes. Oh, because definitely. Because they don't require refrigerators. Mm -hmm. You don't have to reheat or anything. Right. They're just perfect. And it's also great with raisins is, especially during the winter time when a lot of the fruits aren't in season, mm -hmm. the fresh fruits, you always, raisins are in season all year all round. Year long. So you keep uh -huh. those on hand and you've got ready, fruit ready to go. They're portable. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and this is actually a, um, a popcorn mix that's, it's a homemade recipe. And by the way, all these recipes that I'm showing today, these are, you can find these at loveyourraisins.com. There's okay. hundreds of nutritious, delicious recipes. This is a curry 
pistachio and California California raisin wow. mix. Curry it has pistachio. popcorn. Yeah, we've got the shells, uh, mm -hmm. out of the shell pistachios, raisins. Yeah, you can see some mm. right there. There's actually some sesame sticks in there and a little curry powder. And that just, the flavor is so delicious. And so again, you're making it homemade. It's going to be less expensive than if you bought a mix already pre-made. And what I love about making it myself, I know mm -hmm. what's in it. Definitely. Then I don't have any labels I have to worry right? about. Right. And this mix here, no added sugar. Mm. It's okay. all natural. Now, protein. That's yes. an important part yes. of our diet and, and also a way we can economize. How do you suggest? Yeah, well, with, and proteins tend to be the more expensive mm -hmm. ingredient out of all the things that we eat. So, with, for example, one is chicken. We like to eat chicken breast because it's lean, but chicken breast can be a little pricey. So I recommend roasting a whole chicken. And it might sound a little daunting, but you know what? You just rub that with a little oil, salt and pepper, some seasonings, uh -huh. pop that in your oven, 450 degrees maybe for 15 minutes, and then lower the temperature and finish roasting it. Uh -huh. And you have this delicious chicken. And you've and got several meals in yes, one dish. Yes, you've got dinner. Then you can take those leftovers and make it into a salad. Uh -huh. And I actually have this delicious salad that I want to show you today. Okay. This is a uh, curried chicken salad, a crunchy curried chicken salad. Uh, so what we do, this is, so this is the diced chicken from the roasted chicken that we're going to put in here. But first, what we want to do is make the dressing. Oh. Okay, so we have plain yogurt here. It's non-fat yogurt. Mm -hmm. We're also going to take some Russian dressing that's actually low cal. And whenever you're using salad dressing, I recommend, you know, use, use one that's lower cal or reduced fat. Mm -hmm. Keep the You get the flavor, but we're cutting out things we don't yeah, need. Yeah, definitely. And I usually like to go low fat instead of all the way fat free because that's oh. going to give us more flavor. flavor. Yeah. Okay. That's so good then we to just know. mix this all together to make our dressing. Oh, I like that. You're mixing it in the same bowl. We oh. don't have to dirty up something else. Yeah, I'm all about the less dishes, the better. better. We want to mm -hmm. keep, yeah. Even though my husband does do the dishes for me, I do like well, that. How nice. but, uh, well, but, uh, you're the chef. You do the cooking. <laughs> yeah, that's our deal. And then over here, we have so our chicken. We have some celery and uh, green bell pepper. Mm -hmm. We have our California raisins. And then we just mix this just um, all Just start mixing into it all bowl. together. Yep. Uh -huh. And what I love about this salad, you can make this in advance. You can have it for lunch. You can have it um, for a light dinner. And it has, it just has so much flavor. That curry powder, you know, curry powder doesn't contain any sodium. It just has all of that flavor in there. And some uh, spices that we add maybe in place of salt. Mm -hmm. If you read those labels, sometimes you'll find you're not really not adding salt. It's in a different form. Right, exactly. So, so we want to watch right. out for, yeah, those added sugars uh -huh. and watch out for the added salt. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we have our salad here, and then we just scoop this, and you can serve this on a bed of lettuce just for, you know, to give it a round it out. Of course, get more veggies in there. We've got this beautiful mm. salad. And then what I like to do do you like almonds? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I like to sprinkle almonds on oh. top. Then you've got, you already have the crunch from the bell pepper, but then sure. we have the crunch from the almonds, and almonds are packed with nutrients as well. And then I like to put some tomatoes around mm -hmm. the edges here. So this recipe probably what makes six, eight servings oh, easily? Yeah, easily uh -huh. six servings, yeah. Uh -huh. So you've got that for the week, delicious salad. Packed with the nutrients, and, uh, and wow. of course delicious. And uh -huh. yeah, so that is one of my faves right there. Okay, now what about, I, I, I know you talk a lot about the dried beans. Mm -hmm. We talked about dried fruits. What about yeah. dried well, beans? Well, dried beans, that counts as our protein again, okay? So that's got the fiber, it's got the, um, the potassium, and very economical. You're talking very. dried beans, mm -hmm. we're talking very economical. Okay, and then also quinoa. Quinoa is actually, technically it's a seed, but it's a, it's, it counts as a grain, and it has the protein. It's mm -hmm. actually complete protein. And that's this grain that, this, uh, that we see here. This is uh -huh. quinoa. So, And if people haven't tried it, I know for years I mm -hmm. hadn't tried it. And then I had someone yeah. on the show that did. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Very delicious. So, yes, yeah, so you can count it as a grain. You can count it as a protein. And then speaking of gr uh, grains, we have whole grains. So, of course, we want to get as many of our grains to be whole is as that possible. Right? Okay. Yes. And this recipe that I have to show you today. This is a muffin that you're this going to make. Yeah, uh -huh. this is a muffin. It's a it's a, a two grain raisin muffin. Mm. And this has no sugar added. So what we have here, we have some oatmeal, some whole wheat flour, and some all-purpose flour. Oh. And then we add some baking powder into this. Mm -hmm. So we basically, you know, for, for muffins, you want to take your dry ingredients, whisk those, uh, mix those together. And then we're going to mix up our wet ingredients. And over here in this blender, we have some sweet potatoes. Well, I thought that's what that was. Yep, they're just canned, drained sweet potatoes. Uh -huh. We add our California raisins into the blender. 
And the California raisins, they're adding sweetness to this, and we don't have to add any added sugar. Natural this, sweetness. Yeah, uh -huh. it's natural sweetness. Because, again, it's just raisins. That's all... All the goodness is just coming from the natural raisins. And what's that website again where we can get all these yummy recipes? Yes, we want to go to loveyourraisins.com. Love your raisins. Yes, so definitely check that out. Okay, milk is what else I added in here, low-fat milk. Now we just uh, puree this. We just want to puree it until it's smooth. Okay, Oop, I'm going to keep going here. All right, I'm just going to whisk, whisk this up a little here. And the raisins, you know what? You basically just want to make sure the sweet potatoes are pureed. The raisins, uh -huh. I mean, you, the raisins are a beautiful garnish as well. So we well, just and wanna... I think they look so pretty when it's cooked because Def you want to yeah. see the, the pieces of raisin. Yeah, and they plump up and they just get really delicious. Yep. Okay. So once that's pretty well, at least as long as the sweet potatoes are pureed, then mm -hmm. we just add this to our wet ingredients here. And we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll also pour in some, a little more of that milk that we had. Oh, I noticed you just used part of it in the blender. That was just to add some moisture to what yes, you were blending Yes, exactly, up. just to get mm -hmm. it spinning around there. Mm -hmm. And then we have our oil. You could use vegetable oil, you could use canola oil. I like to use the canola oil because it has those heart healthy ingredients. Then we have some pecans. Mm. And I mean, the nuts, are just, they just add so they much do. flavor, nutrition. And then we have two eggs. And then, of course, we can't forget our vanilla. Oh, I love vanilla. I do too. I put it in almost everything. And you didn't even smell it. I tend to oh, smell vanilla smell every it. single time I cook with it. <sighs> I, can I don't know why. <laughs> it it's just so a good. habit. Yeah, it smells so good. Yeah, now we just mix this. And now the key with muffins, Cheryl, is you don't want to over mix it. We're just mixing it enough to moisten the flour. Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise, if you over mix it, you're going to have. Uh, uh, like tough muffins, and we just want to mix it oh. long enough so I know even is... on boxed muffin recipes it says do not over mix. Yeah, so we don't want to over mix that. Okay, so we'll just uh, mix this together. And these muffins are great. I like to, you can, this, you can tell this makes a big batch, it does. right? This makes a very big batch. And so what you can do is, this actually makes 24 muffins, oh. so you can freeze these. So whatever Go you want. Go ahead and need. bake them, you mean? Yeah, well, after you bake them, you're going to uh -huh. freeze them, oh, actually. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, you, after you bake them, you can freeze them, and then you can, you'll can you have muffins for the oh. next month. So okay. they freeze well. Yes, they freeze really great. So mm -hmm. now we just scoop this into our muffin tin, and then what we want to do is bake this for about, you know, 370 degrees. We're going to bake it for about... 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, and then, muffins don't tend, I mean, what you see is pretty much what you get. So you do want to go ahead and fill your muffin cup mm -hmm. full. Yes, I like I like really nice uh -huh. rounded muffins. Uh -huh. You want it to count for something, right? And right. you're gonna get all these whole grains. We have got the oats, we have the flour, we have the raisins, which are adding fruit and uh -huh. those antioxidants, fiber. Um, it's it's uh, just a really uh, nutritious, really nutritious mm -hmm. muffin. And these bake, how long did you say? About 10 to 15 minutes. That's fast. And then we've uh -huh. got our finished muffins over there. I might right. top those off with a little See, now little, I like uh, being able to see spray. the raisins. I like to be able to see yeah, what's they in look something. Beautiful so in there. that's yes, good that definitely. it pureed just right. Beautiful. Okay, we want to keep it real. Yep. We want to uh, buy in season. I think that's buy very important. Buy in season important. when possible. Keep those dried fruits in stock. Make sure, and again, read the label. Look at the ingredients. Make sure you keep mm -hmm. those added sugars out of the diet. Raisins, no added sugar. And I noticed when I looked at the raisin box, it just says raisins. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's what, what we want to look for, definitely. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. My pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to reduce allergens in our homes. We'll show how to use a new presser foot to attach trims on small areas, such as doll clothes. And we'll also learn how to use special numbers to create a personalized plaid design on needlework designs. Did you know you may be sleeping with over 2 million dust mites in your bed every night? One of our guests on the next show will demonstrate some products on the market to help reduce allergens in the home. Another guest is an inventor and owner of a company that makes unusual presser feet for all brands and models of sewing machines. She's going to show how to sew on decorative trims like ribbons onto a piece of fabric using the sequins and ribbon foot that she invented. This is especially useful when making small items like doll clothes. And finally, we'll meet a guest who's going to show how a plaid needlepoint design is created by repeating certain sets of numbers that can be individualized for each person. This results in a one-of-a-kind design. Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. 
If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. And I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6500 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6500 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.